Welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This will be the second part of our Dofer A102 diode filter series. Last time we gave some background into the design of this filter and reviewed some of the basics about this module, uh, such as the controls we talked about and the inputs and the outputs. Uh, this time we'll be hearing a few sound examples using this filter. Uh, first, I thought it would be useful to hear how the filter behaves all by itself as a sine wave oscillator. So let's patch from our output uh, over to our mixer. And uh, at the moment, I have cutoff and frequency, as you can see right here. Uh, let's see, cutoff is at zero, and then resonance is also at zero. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put frequency about the midway point right there. And uh, let me just patch out. So we'll start right there. There we go. And so we don't hear any sound. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly increase the resonance. So we're going to bring this up a little bit. And right about there, we start to get a little bit of self-oscillation. Now this is kind of unique, uh, at least in my experience with filters. Uh, in general, uh, the filters that I've kind of played around with, I've had to go kind of a little further on the dial to get to that point where it starts to self-oscillate. So uh, this is one thing that I found that was pretty unique. Um, now, one thing that's this actually kind of even threw me off when I did this at first, um, and then I started to kind of understand what I had read in the manual about the strange behavior uh, that's behind this. Now, when it's in this condition, if we increase the frequency here, so if I bring this up, we can hear kind of the sine wave going up. And I apologize if this is breaking your ears or anything. And then right about there, it sort of tops off and we can't hear it anymore. Uh, but in fact, I kind of got curious while I was listening to this, bring it all the way back down. You can hear some pretty low tones there too. Um, I got curious about this uh, and wanted to know exactly kind of how far it really went. Uh, so I popped it into my oscilloscope and I got some pretty interesting results. And I'm going to share those with you here in a little bit. Um, so let's go over to our oscilloscope. And I believe I already have it patched in. Yeah, should already have it patched in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to increase the frequency again. Right about there. And over at our oscilloscope, you should see a little bit of a waveform there. Uh, let me just adjust the magnification over here so we can kind of see what's going on. There we go. So you can kind of see a nice smooth waveform happening over there at our oscilloscope. And if I move the frequency dial up, you can see just going a little bit increments there. You can see it kind of in the oscilloscope going higher and higher. Kind of what you normally see when you when you uh, pipe a waveform into an oscilloscope. So right there into the highest range possible. Uh, but after I did this, uh, I kind of wanted to see a little bit more uh, so I popped over to my spectrum analyzer in this same scope here. So I'm going to switch over to that mode so you can take a look at that. Because I found a little bit more interesting stuff over there. So here's my uh, spectrum analyzer right there. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, let me just increase the magnification just a little bit. Yeah, like about there I think works pretty well. Okay. So you can see that I'm kind of in the pretty low range right there. Uh, I'm topping off at about 20k, and so if I adjust my frequency and I go up a little bit, you can kind of see it start to sweep in the upward direction, and then right there, we're at about 5k, and I can go all the way up to right there, which is about 10k. I can go even higher, about 
you know, the kind of 15K range where, in all honesty, I can't, I can't really hear it there. And I can even go higher. And you can see the bump is continuing, even though I personally cannot hear that. Uh, you might have a little bit better ears than I do. Uh, so let me go a little further. And you can see right about there, it's starting to peak at the 20K range. And then if I keep turning the dial a little bit, maybe about there, you can kind of see that it's now flown off the spectrum analyzer. But in actuality, if I look at the dial over here, I still actually have a little bit of space there. So I got even more curious when I saw that, and I thought, well, how far does that thing really go? So I switched over into this third mode, and I'm gonna take you over there to that. And uh, this last mode, let me check what, that, what this mode is actually called, just so I don't uh, kind of tell you the wrong thing. I think this is actually my frequency meter, so I'm gonna flip over to that. There we go. And now let's just kind of do the same thing. Run the same test, so I'm going up. And you can see right there, it's reading about 400 hertz. It's about a G sharp four. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. Right there, we're at about 32, about 3200. And let's go a little further. There we go, we're about 12K right there. And this is kind of where we were in the spectrum analyzer a little while ago. I'm gonna keep going. There, I'm getting close to 20. Whoa, actually, yeah, right there. Pretty close to 20. And right there, I can't hear it, but I can sort of, I think sense a little bit, or maybe it's just the, the previous tone that was there a moment ago. And uh, you can see now that the filter still has a little bit of uh, sort of movement that's available to you on the frequency dial. So I'm gonna go a little further and then watch over at the, at the scope. You can see I've kind of gone into the almost a 30K there. So I'm gonna go a little further. And I'm all the way up to now 39K. So now I'm just gonna move this all the way to the top and see how far it takes us. There we go. And it looks like it kind of topped out at about 39, that's about right. Yeah, it looks like it topped out right around 39, 767. So uh, I found this pretty interesting just because uh, I hadn't really uh, encountered one of my filters going up that high. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. And in my test, I actually got a little bit higher number there. So let's run through it just one more time. I'm not gonna spend too much more time on this, but I did want you to kind of see this because I thought this was interesting. So I'm gonna go a little further, see if I get a different number. Going higher, higher. And I'm going all the way to the top. And there's just gonna be a different number. Looks like it topped out around 4193. Try that again. And actually, one thing I can I can actually do, I think, is bring up my resonance setting, which is going to increase the amplitude of my sine wave. So let me go up from there. Yeah, now we're getting a little bit better readings over there at the frequency meter. So I'm going, going. And right there. Yeah, that's pretty close to what I had gotten in my original test. So... We're up in the 49K uh, range right there. Uh, pretty high. So uh, I would think that's twice the amount of normal hearing. So and then if I bring it down a little bit, back into about the 20K range, we should start to hear it. A little lower than 20K, but right there you should sort of hear a little bit depending on your speaker system. Um, but anyway, that is uh, one of the kind of interesting things I found just doing sort of preliminary tests uh, for this uh, particular segment of Rao's World of Sense where we're kind of looking uh, at the diode filter and it's just kind of basic characteristics, just the way it works all by itself. Um, 
so now that we've taken a look at that, um, we've seen that it has kind of pretty broad range here. Um, I thought we'd go a little bit further and actually uh, maybe put some notes in here and uh, get something a little more interesting going on. Um, so if you look down at the bottom, um, I have a few notes that are being played over here at my uh, A155. Um, and they're being output via these two yellow uh, cables over here into this uh, switch. And so what it's doing is it's playing the top row of pitches and then it's playing the bottom row of pitches. And then uh, in this switch, they're being output uh, over to the quantizer, which is over here. So the A155, or sorry, A156 quantizer. Got my numbers mixed up. Um, I didn't get a close up of this one. Uh, so uh, if you kind of are unfamiliar, I just have it going into the CV input and then I have the CV output over here via this red cable. Uh, and this red cable is what we're going to take up into our diode low pass. So we're going to trigger our uh, sine wave oscillator that we have going in our diode filter. Filter. So here we go. There we go. And my frequency range might be a little high, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. There we go. And if I take you back to my oscilloscope over there, uh, you can see that you know the sine wave is kind of changing frequencies as we expect when it's being triggered with notes. Um, one thing that I kind of missed, I think, as I was kind of jumping through some of this, uh, was I jumped through the resonance setting, uh, which I guess I forgot to mention, that when you have it in self-oscillation, you can kind of use this to adjust the amplitude of your sine waves. So right there, it's fairly low level. And if I go up, I can get it at the full resonance setting over here and have it at the full level of amplitude. So that's what was getting us a little bit better results when we were uh, trying to get to that high frequency that I had uh, initially found in my tests. Okay, so we have that going over here and uh, we can bring it down a little bit. Over here on the diode low pass frequency adjustment. So you can hear that you can get some fairly low range sine waves. And you can see over at the oscilloscope that the waveform has lengthened quite a bit. So right there we're at a setting at around five micro, or sorry, 500 microseconds. So nice little boomy sounds coming from our diode low pass. And then of course you can get mid range sounds as well or high frequency. And of course, super high frequency um, frequencies that you know we can't even hear, or humans, I mean. So at any rate, this is kind of the basic demonstration that I wanted to walk you through in this specific segment um, for the diode filter uh, acting as a sine wave oscillator. Um, in the upcoming segment, uh, we're going to be taking a look at a filtering example where we're going to patch uh, possibly some waveforms in here, uh, do a little bit more of a, a sequencing, you know, real, real world type example where you would not necessarily be using this as a sine wave oscillator. You might be patching an external signal uh, in maybe from an A110 or something else uh, in your modular system. So hopefully you'll join us for that. Uh, and I hope you found this uh, segment useful, uh, and we'll see you next time. Keep on patching out there. <laughs>